Well, hello there. So guys, as you know, this very last day, what was it, two days ago, we decided to tear down the Miata. Well, things went really well, and it looks like now we're looking at a full-on rebuild. It's going to be interesting, but it's also going to be expensive. Now, this thing's been a long time coming, and we have a lot of things to consider. If you guys haven't seen it already, I'll put a link up here where you can see the video. We completely tore down Austin's engine. It's bone stock. We went and we brought it down to the machine shop. When we brought it down to the machine shop, they went and they took it, and they were like, okay, you know, it might be like a week or two before they can turn it around. Plus, they had to decide whether or not we were going to reuse our pistons or if we needed new pistons. If we were going to hone the block, not hone the block. There's a lot of things that they needed to know, and we didn't know. So we were like, we have to figure this out. So we had to figure out exactly how much everything was going to cost. So if you guys are like us and we're trying to figure out, you know, do I want to do an engine rebuild? Do I want to find an old one and just do that? We figured out basically the cost for rebuilding a Miata on average. We found a few little ideas that we want to try. And it just comes down to cost and how much you want to spend. Um, we haven't quite decided what our budget is or our power range, which is something you really, really want to figure out. And I honestly don't know what he wants to do. I mean, I'm sure he'd love to make a shitload of power on that little engine, but let's face it, he's probably not going to make a whole bunch of power because a reliable car is the best kind of car. And I'm going to go over each little option that we have and the total cost um, and, you know, what the different parts are. Because there's a whole bunch of parts out there for the Miata. So let's first look at pistons, okay? Pistons are something that, well, you need them. <laughs> I mean, you just need them, that's it. Like, you can't get around it, you need pistons. So the pistons that we're looking at, we have a couple of options. A, we reuse the stock pistons, which is not likely, because they had pitting and there was obvious signs of detonation, uh, some scratches and stuff, which is normal, but it was a little excessive. So. Probably not going to reuse the stock pistons. So then the other option is we get a rebuild kit. Usually those come with some stock cast pistons, but brand new or remanufactured. Um, and those are affordable. Um, and then the other option would be to go, well, forged. Um, <laughs> and that is the bulletproof, we're not going to have the pistons be a failure point. Um, which is really not a bad option. But the thing is, when it comes down to you know, cost versus practicality, how much power are you actually making, you know, do you really need forge that? I, I don't know. Once we decide our power numbers and what our goals are, then we'll decide if we want to do that. The other option, and this is one that's really interesting, and I don't know if a lot of people have heard of this, but there was a 1989 through 90 something, 323 GTX, and it ran the 1.6 liter turbo, um, and it came with lower compression pistons. So basically, instead of uh, flat top pistons, it had dished pistons. And those dish pistons help pistons. Those dish pistons help lower the compression in those cars because it was turbo from the factory. So, you know, it helps a little bit because you know we're not running a computer yet. This is real basic, you know. So this might give us a little extra safety margin, and it's not that much more than the stock Miata pistons. So it's a slight upgrade for a little bit more money. So that's an option too when it comes down to the fully forged route. You know, you're looking at Wiseco, SuperTech. I mean, there's a whole bunch of other brands I'm sure out there, but the two big ones are Supertech and Wiseco. Really, it's a forged piston, forged piston, forged piston. It's a forged piston. You know, you, you can't really go wrong, except for the price. That's the one way to, that's the one way you can go wrong. The other option that we're going to look at is going to be the rods. So when we're looking at the rods, we got a couple different choices. Okay, so first we can look at possibly reusing our stock rods. Now, when we went to remove one of them, it was the cap was rotated slightly, which means that there's a good chance that it could have been, you know, well, let's face it, it could have been bent slightly. It's hard to tell, but in order to check it, I don't have the tools to do it. That means I have to pay a machine shop to do it. Well, guess how much a machine shop wants? They want $225 total to like recondition the rods. It would be like $100 to check, and then if it is needing to be reconditioned, it would be like $125. So it's like... At that point, it's not even worth it because you can get forged rods from a no-name company. These are like eBay rods. We're talking CX Racing or Max Speeding rods or, you know, all those. You can get for about 210 225 That's a brand new forged rod. Like, it's the same price as a stock one, so it just would make perfect sense to do that anyway. So more than likely, that's all we're going to look at when it comes to rods. I do love coffee. So the other thing that we want to look at is 
you know, the possibility of maybe doing a mix and match kind of a thing. So we want to look at the total cost of these four builds. So essentially I've broken it down into four builds. We've got your cheap, we've got the 323 GTX build, is what I'm going to call it, and then we got the fully forged Billy Badass Monster Miata slash Big Dick Kahuna Miata build, whatever you want to call that. And then you got the kind of more practical, what I like to call the combo deal, where you kind of take the best of both worlds, save a little bit of money, but you're still spending more than what you normally would, and it's gonna, you know, it's gonna work out in the end. So the first deal that we got is the cheapo bargain discount, you know, the party bin that you get in the back of Home Depot where you go and buy the used wood. That deal is about $434. That's your pistons, your rods, your bearings, your gaskets, it's everything. Done and done, 434, just for parts. This isn't machine work, we'll go over that in a minute. Then what we have is the 323 GTX build. This one's a little bit more, but not much. It's about $500 for parts. That's your pistons, that's your rods, that's your gaskets and your bearings, okay? Now, one thing I will say about the GTX build is some sell the pistons with the rings and some don't, so you gotta check that. It might increase the cost slightly, but it's only like 40, 50 bucks for OEM GTX rings. It's not very expensive, but make sure you check that to see if it has the rings or not. So the next one that we have is the fully forged Billy Badass, Big Dick, Big Kahuna, whatever you wanna call it, Miata build. This is your fully forged one, okay? This is the most expensive hands down, and it's about $1,018 just for parts. This is name brand rods. We're talking like Manly, which is like $389. Then you got the Weisco Pistons for $489. It's a little bit more for Super Tech, I want to say. And then you got to buy bearings. So ACL, I found those on um, I found those on Amazon, actually. You can get a good deal. You just have to find the part number from the Fly Miata and then check on Amazon, and it's there. You can save some money. So it's about like 100 bucks. I want to say, for those. Yeah, 70 to 100 It just depends. Um, and then... We got, we'd have to get like a gasket set, just a generic, you know, head gaskets, intakes, all that, like just generic gaskets, about 70 bucks. If you Google it, you can find it, I promise. <laughs> and then there's this. This is what I like to call the combo, you know, it's kind of like that soft pretzel, okay? So this one is like, it's called the combo, right? So it's like those old pretzels you used to get, you know, the pretzels and they had them stuffed with peanut butter. It's real nice on the outside, but a little crunchy and creamy on the inside. It's a good sweet deal, you know, good combination of sweet and salty. So what I would say is this one's probably the best deal for what you're getting. And that's where you would use either like a name brand piston, like Weissco, Super Tech, something along those lines. And then you use like off-brand connecting rod, like, you know, CX Racing or Max Peating Rods or whatever eBay brand there is out there. Um, so you save money on the rods. And then you get just generic bearings and gaskets, and that one's a little bit cheaper. And that one is about $839. So, you know, that little bit of savings, it, you know, it's a couple hundred bucks, but I mean, it's a couple hundred bucks. If you're, you know, looking to shave some money, that might be where you do it. Okay, so now we've got all the parts situated, okay? We got four options. We got to make a decision, but we can't really make a decision until we look at the cost of machine work. This is where it gets expensive, and this is the big, you know, question mark of how much is this gonna cost? Because you think like, oh, I just take my block down at the engine shop, I drop it off, and that's it, we're done. Nothing else to it, right? But that's where you're wrong. You drop it off, and then they usually come back and they're like, oh, hey, I found this, or oh, God, there's a screw in here, and we need to pull that sucker out, or uh, looks like you got a slight crack in your block, buddy, so uh, we might have to get rid of that thing. Or they'll be like, oh, you know, your, your cylinder head's cracked or you're missing a couple of valves you bent or you see where I'm going with this? They, they rack up the price. It's, it's, it's what they do. It, it, but they're doing it right. And they're going to be able to do stuff that I can't do because, A, I don't have the experience or the tools. And the guys that we're dropping it off with, they work at a place called Duffin Machine Works. It's here in Texas, local guys. They've got combined 168 years worth of experience. These guys know what they're doing. They know a hell of a lot more than I do, so I trust their judgment. They did all the machine work for my RX-7. If you don't know about it, I'll put a little thing up here with a playlist, but yeah, they did all the machine work on that engine block, um, and we fully built it. We have not had any problems with the engine in that car. The problem has always been like electrical and other stuff, but that's a completely different situation for a completely different day. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Yeah, so back to the machine work. So when we look at the machine work, the big thing that you got to look at is, you know, your core stuff. Okay, we're going to drop off the block. We're going to have it checked. Make sure that it's okay. Get the magna fluxing done. Have them look to make sure there's no cracks or no, like, significant damage. I didn't see anything with my eye, but it's usually good to get it checked. So they're going to do that. Now, depending on which bill we go with, is going to depend whether or not we need to have it bored and honed. It could also need to be bored out just because when they go to look at the block, they're going to check and see if there's anything out of round or if it's within specs enough to where they could just hone it and be done. So after they tell us that the block is good and we decide whether or not we're honing it, boring it, whatever, we'll know more about the price. That's kind of the big variable. The other big variable is the cylinder head. So we brought them the cylinder head and it didn't have anything on it. I mean, it was, uh, you know, we took the cams out, we took the lifters out. It was just a bare cylinder head. It just, it had the valves and the springs and retainers and stuff like that. And they're going to basically take it. They're going to pressure test it. They're going to put it on this thing. They fill it up with water with this little plane uh, with clear glass, like plexiglass. And then they check it. They CC it. They do a pressure check to make sure that the thing's actually sealing all the way. And that's where they can really identify if there's any bad valves or anything like that. Um, and then if so if they do have to replace anything that might increase the cost, but we have a basic cons basic cost right now and you know if it's cylinder head it's about 190 so it's about $65 to do that pressure test and it's about $60 to have them resurface the bottom of the head Which is just basically they shave like a thousandth off to make it towards perfectly straight So that way when we go to put it back on there's no more issues because more than likely Austin warped his head It's just that's more than likely what happened, but We'll see when they check it out and they tell us what's happening. And then of course there's a crankshaft. We have to give them the crankshaft. Uh, when we dropped all that off, they thought that the crankshaft looked good uh, from what they could see. They thought the block looked okay. Um, and they, you know, basically they're just gonna micro polish the crank, which you could technically do yourself, but this is again one of those things. They know what they're doing. They'll be able to tell us, hey, what kind of bearings we need. Do we need standard over undersize? You know, is it within specs? Is it bent? Is there anything wrong with it? And they'll be able to tell us. So it's it's pretty important process. But as soon as you drop your parts off at the machine shop, you're already in there. You're in the hole. You know, we're talking. We dropped it off, and we're already in it for like 600 bucks. So I mean, we're already in this like this build. So this is where the second part of this comes up, and it is if you're already 600 dollars in, it's more than it would cost to go get a used engine. We had trouble finding one, but that's a lame excuse. We wanted to do a rebuild. Let's be honest. But the thing is, once we do this rebuild, we have to decide, we're like, okay, we're already 600 in. How far do we want to go? Do we want to spend over $1,000 just to have a stock engine that we could have found used for like, you know, a couple hundred bucks? Yes, it would be like a brand new engine. So it would be basically zero miles on an engine. You know, that, that would be nice. But we're still in the same boat. Like there's a good chance it'll blow up down the road. So we're looking at, well, okay, let's, let's do some upgrades, right? So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna upgrade this son of a gun. So we know for sure we're at least not doing the basic cheapo OEM rebuild. We know that for a fact. So now we gotta decide, are we doing the 323 GTX? Are we gonna forge it or are we gonna do the combo forge? If we have to pay a lot out for the costs of doing the machine work, that's gonna really, really cut into our budget. So we're really, really waiting to hear back from these guys and see what they say. And then based on that, we'll make our decision. So the total cost for an OEM rebuild including forged connecting rods, that would be the only upgrade, is $1,034. It's not too bad. I mean, it's a slight upgrade. It's not terrible. And this is barring any errors with the machine work and any additional costs that we can't see coming. Now to do the 323 GTX build, which is a pretty intense build, <laughs> it's basically you're upgrading the pistons. They're still cast pistons, but they're dished, so you lower compression less chance of detonation, you know, it's, it's still kind of good. That's about $1,100. So for 70 extra bucks, you get, you know, some dished pistons. So slightly less chance of detonation. I'd say that's worth it. You know, if you're not worried about your pistons and you're just not pushing low boost reliably, I think that would be fine. So for the Forge build, this is the Billy Badass, the Miata from hell, the Hakuna Miata, Big Dick Monster Miata, whatever you want to call it. The, the, the great build, the build that we all want to see. Okay, the very expensive one, it's about $1,658. That's including all the machine work, that's all the parts that's assembled in the car. It's a lot of money, it's a lot of money. 
and you you know that there's going to be more costs, so it's probably going to be closer to 2,000. Let's be real, it's going to be closer to 2,000 because that's just well, if you've watched any of our shows, you know how things go. <laughs> so you know we're probably going to screw something up, or something's going to get broken, or you know it's just how it goes, just how it goes. So the combo deal, which is the good deal, it's the one, it's this, it's the pretzels with the peanut butter, okay? Just remember the pretzel and the peanut butter. They're delicious, and that's what this deal is. This is the good one, okay? This is where we use the eBay connecting rods with the Weissco pistons, and we use the upgraded rod bearings. We use the basic, you know, gasket set. That I mean, you can't only go so fancy with gaskets. I mean, I guess we could use a Kometic, but that's a hundred some odd bucks. Ouch. The pretzel deal, it's a good deal. So the combo deal is about $1,479, approximately. Obviously, it's probably going to cost a little bit more, just like everything else, but it's probably going to be a decent deal. I think it's going to be a pretty sweet deal, to be honest. I mean, I, I think that that's probably the best deal. I mean, who doesn't love pretzels with peanut butter inside? I mean, it's the two best things. It's pretzels and peanut butter. I mean, it's, it's pretty good. If you haven't tried them, you should definitely try them. So yeah, that's basically our build. That's the, the options that we're looking at. That's the possibilities that we're thinking about, and that's where we're headed with the Miata guys. Um, I, I, I'm excited to do this because it's been a while since I built an engine. I'm not a professional mechanic. You guys probably already know this. This is not my job. Like this isn't what I get paid to do. I do it for fun. I do it because it's a hobby and because it keeps my hands busy and keeps my mind clear. We're gonna do this as quickly as we can. And I hope you guys get very excited about it because I am stoked to get started building this. And let me know in the comments below because I'm curious. Do you guys want to see the complete engine build start to finish in one long ass drawn out video or would you prefer to see it cut up in sections? Because I have a feeling if I do one long video it's going to be probably close to 45 minutes. And that's cut down like condensed. Because when it comes to building an engine there's a lot of tiny details and I want to make sure that I get as much of that as possible. Because it's going to be an informative video. I mean it's I'm sure some people are interested to see it and some people maybe not, but I'm gonna do it because I'm interested. So <laughs> I hope you guys like it too. So just let me know down below what you guys wanna see. Do you wanna see one long video start to end or would you rather just see it dropped up in sections, you know, and just see how it goes. So I hope you all have a great day. I hope this was helpful. I hope that if you are planning to do a Miata build that you follow along with us and see how it goes. I'd like to help you out in any way I can because I know the struggles of building an engine and picking parts and all that can be a pain in the butt. But uh, if you take your time, you focus, you Google everything, you can save money, you can do this. It's not as hard as you think it might be, but it's very important to pay very close attention to what you're doing because these costs, they can get way out of hand really fast. So pay attention, make sure you have a good budget and just be prepared to spend a lot of money but also to have a lot of fun. And that's what it's all about anyway. So guys, have a great day, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Tony, what's up? What? What? Yeah. What is the deal with this? All right, I guess we got to bring this in. Come that on, Tony. Fast. Tony, where are you going? Tony, Tony, where are you going, buddy? You you running away? Tony, come on. Tony, on. hey. Tony, come on. Come on, we got we got parts. We got parts. We got to get the parts come in. Come on. Come on. Help us get the parts. Oh.